Hi, I'm Sophia Bennett and I'm really pleased to be asked some questions about my books and my thoughts about writing today. So here goes, first question. I write about creative young people who make friends and solve big problems. I think that's 10 words. Um, I started off with the Thread series and that stars Noni, Edie, Jenny and Crow. So those are four girls growing up in London. Crow has come over from Uganda for reasons that we find out about. The others have always been London girls and they are all really different. So one is into drama, one is into saving the world, one is really into fashion and the other one is incredibly shy and we don't really know much about her until we discover that she's actually a, a secret designer genius and it took me a long time to write Threads, it was my first book that got published and I'm very fond of it and that became a series of three. So those are my first creative young people and since then I've written about musicians and artists and photographers. Um, uh, a girl who gets caught up in the painting world, the Victorian pre-Raphaelite painters. Um, and recently um, I've been writing my new book that I've just got the copies of yesterday uh, called The Bigger Picture, uh, which is actually about real people. Um, and there's about 30 artists in there and I've got interviews with some of them. Um, and some of them were alive 100 years ago and some of them are um, still practicing today. Some of them are still quite young. Um, so creativity is the big thing that um, holds everything together in my books. Creativity and wanting to do the right thing, I think. Um, I was inspired to become an author largely by my mother because she always encouraged me to read and she read to me and she told me stories and she recited poetry and just we always had words around. We had rhymes, we had rhythms, we talked. Um, stories were a big thing. They still are whenever I go home. Um, so there was my mother and and then some of the books that I read when I was kind of seven, eight, nine were Noel Stretfield books, E. Nesbitt books. I loved The Railway Children and The Secret Garden and Little Princess and Ballet Shoes and lots of the classics. Um, and I loved Secret Seven. I loved mystery stories. I kind of, any book I could get my hand on really. Um, and I was very lonely when I was seven. Uh, we'd moved out to Hong Kong from south of England where I started off at school and I'd been a really chatty friendly girl and suddenly I'd lost all my friends because we'd moved so far away um, and that's when books really saved my life and I knew even then that if I couldn't be an Olympic gymnast, which never happened, that I wanted to be a writer. Favourite books as a teenager? I was talking to a friend about this last weekend and it's really interesting we'd picked up the same kind of books and it was a bit strange so uh, to start off with when I was a teen I would say my favorite series was Nancy Drew mysteries so I this American teenage girl who had her own convertible driving around solving crime I love those stories I read hundreds of them um, but then I moved really quickly on to spy stories I think that was kind of through Anne Frank diaries and things I was really interested in what went on in in Germany and Russia after the Second World War so I got really into Len Dayton's spy stories and then I got into Alexander Solzhenitsyn a beautiful short very sad book about life in a Siberian labour camp called A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich and I read all the Jane Austens uh, I read all sorts of things when I was a teenager I loved Jackie Collins books which I kind of wasn't allowed to read but I thought they were great I love books by Jilly Cooper um, that were about girls falling in love which I was interested in didn't happen to me then um, and I like really really boysy books as well um, kind of classic adventure stories and spy stories um, so I carried on reading whatever was around really the one thing I didn't read much of was sci-fi but whenever I've read a sci-fi book ever since I've really enjoyed it so um, I don't think there's a genre I wouldn't enjoy actually feminism interesting issue I think feminism has always been important and I think it always will be as long as all girls aren't treated in the same way as all boys and I think there are some societies where girls are kind of treated the same as boys and it's fantastic and um, 
both sides are polite to each other and they have the same opportunities and they acknowledge each other and men feminism doesn't need to be such a big thing but in so many places around the world and certainly um, in the UK um, we haven't got there yet um, with my new book this one that's coming out soon called The Bigger Picture I'm resurrecting the history of a lot of fantastic female artists who were absolutely brilliant um, but after they died the the story got lost somehow in art history so their, their male friends went on to become super famous and they didn't and that's what I'm using my feminism for at the moment is going back into history and finding those women who were there who were doing amazing things and telling their stories and bringing them them back into our lives so I think there's still quite a lot of work still to do which character would I be well if you know my books you know that threads is full of fun characters who have a fantastic life and of all of them the coolest would definitely be crow herself the designer um, I think by the end of series three we can see she's going to have an amazing career um, I say series three um, book three um, she in my head she goes off to New York and she becomes a fashion designer there and she's still living there now and she's still having a great life so I think I'd probably like to be Crow um, but if it wasn't her um, then maybe one of the boys from the point in my seventh book love song uh, the point was this this fairly cool band it was like a cross between One Direction and the Beatles really with a bit of the Rolling Stones thrown in and they had an amazing life it was all falling apart when I was writing the book uh, I was writing about how how that the band's friendships were um, put under pressure by being so super famous the way they were um, but I would hope that they would get their act back together they would find their friendship again um, and they would be having pretty cool, cool lives right now. So yeah, I'd be any one of them. Art, music or fashion? Can't choose. I need them all. I need them all. I need music to write to. My, the latest song that I really, really adore is called Miracle by Caravan Palace. And they do some fantastic tracks um, that are used for uh, a virtual reality game I love called Beat Saber. Um, so I'm listening to Miracle a lot while I write, it's just one of the happiest songs I know. Can't do without music. Wrote a lot about that. Um, art, <laughs> just written a book about it, sorry I won't keep advertising my book. Um, yeah, art's been essential to me since I was about 13. Um, I'm not very good at doing it, but I, I'm very moved by seeing really beautiful paintings, sculptures, whatever it may be. Um, fashion. As self-expression, fashion is essential to life. I think, not high fashion, not wearing expensive clothes, I don't care about all of that, but um, wearing things that mean something to you, that last a long time, maybe that were made for you by a friend, um, things that really express your personality, make you feel good about yourself, I think that's pretty important. So I need all three. Novel into movie. Well, I'd love any of my books to be made into a film, and I think any author would say that, but um, my favourite is still Threads, and it's still the one that is most likely to be made into a movie because there is a team of people trying to make that happen right now. So um, there's this thing called development hell, which is what happens to books when movie people get their hands on them, and then for years and years and years you hear that there's a screenplay going on, but then you don't see anything. This is quite normal. Um, and that's what's happening to Threads at the moment, but I'm still crossing my fingers it'll be a movie one day. Favourite villain? Um, I loved her so much, I wrote about her twice. My favourite villain is Sigrid Santorini from the Threads series, and then again from Love Song. Um, she is a kind of Disney princess. She's been very successful in Hollywood in her younger years and she she thinks she's just the most marvelous person and everyone loves her they don't they really don't um and she's very demanding and uh i just enjoy how she messes up people's lives and when i needed lives to be messed up in love song i thought of her and she came into my book and whenever i needed her to just ruin something she ruined it perfectly 
how is writing a non-fiction book different from fiction? Well, having just, yeah, I'll come to you one last time. Having just written one, I had to show you, by the way, it's just so beautiful, this book. Look at this. It's got so much, yeah, it's not upside down, just checking. Um, so much in there, and it's just so beautifully illustrated, and I think it's so rare that teens get books that are illustrated to this level for them, so I'm really thrilled about that. The difference, I think, is really that um, that the real people are going to read this and they're going to double check it. Um, my research is pretty much the same. I do masses of research for fiction. I do masses of research for non-fiction as well. Um, and I get the, my the very strong ideas of the story that I want to tell. But of course, in fiction, I can just make it up and nobody will ever be able to sort of cross-check um, whether I got it right or not because it's all in my head. Whereas with non-fiction, um, with, particularly with these artists I've been talking about, I have to make sure that I am talking about the aspects of their lives that they feel are important to, because uh, a lot of them in this book are still alive. I found that really satisfying, reading through many, many interviews, for example, that they've done, and really trying to tell their stories in some of their own voice. Often I find an artist is, is perceived a certain way, people tell the same old anecdotes about them and then when I look at what they say about those anecdotes they say something quite different. So um, writing non-fiction has been really enjoyable because I'm trying to let these people speak um, and even though I don't have many words to do it because I'm writing about so many people in one book um, it's been it's been a great thing to do and I would love to do much more of it. As I'm making this video, I'm in my shed. I'm going to show you my shed. So here we go. This is my book shed. It, it all looks very organised in this part. And here's my desk and everything. And then this is the disorganised bit round the back. And then opposite me, I don't know if you can see it out, there is a little bird feeder. And there is a bird that keeps coming to, um, to peck at the fat balls in the bird feeder. So it's quite a nice thing to have going on in the background. Anyway. I think that's probably enough for me for now. Um, if you ever want to ask me any questions about any of the books, then try um, www.sophiabennett.com. You can always uh, get in touch with me through my website and ask me whatever you like, and there's details about all the books there. Um, if you're into adventure, I recommend The Castle. Uh, if you're into fashion, I recommend Threads and The Look. Um, if you're into music, I recommend Love Song. Um, if you're into beautiful crumbling old houses, definitely the second half of Love Song. Um, and if you're into history and painting, then um, my Ophelia series. So hopefully um, there's something for anyone who's got a kind of creative side to them. Um, yeah, and if it's adventure, then there's the castle too. And if you're into sharks, like my younger son is, then I'm really sorry. I haven't written about sharks yet, but I fully intend to one day.